Hello and welcome to today's webcast on the effectiveness of customized employment for transition age youth with disabilities. My name is Jennifer McDonough and I'm the project director for our customized employment research project. Let's start by looking at our training plan for today. First, I'm going to give a very short overview of customized employment. If you'd like more in-depth training on customized employment, I highly encourage you to look at our website, www.vcurtc.org. On that website, we have tons of webcasts and even a uh, web course that's totally dedicated to customized employment. After that, we're going to have a panel discussion of employment specialists share their experiences on customized employment. You'll hear about examples of all phases of the CE process. And finally, we're going to close with some case studies that take you through each step of the customized employment process. Let's start off with what customized employment is, as defined by the Workforce Innovation and Opportunities Act. It is defined as competitive, integrated em employment for an individual with a significant disability that's based on an individualized determination of the strengths, needs, and interests of the individual with a significant disability and the business needs of the employer, and carried out through flexible strategies. Let's deconstruct this definition a little bit. First, competitive and integrated employment. So we're talking about individuals making at least minimum wages or wages comparable to other coworkers doing similar tasks and in a work environment with employees without disabilities. So this is not sheltered employment. This is not enclave work. Second, individuals with significant disability. So individuals who need significant support in order to find and maintain employment. Next, based on an individualized determination of the strengths, needs, and interests of the individual. So this is a very personalized approach and very person-centered, focusing on what people can do, not what they can't. The next part of the definition is the business needs of the employer. So customized employment really looks at the needs of the business so that it's a win-win for both the individual job seeker and the business owner or manager. This is not a charity approach to businesses. The individual with the disability is providing an actual uh, needed service, good, or activity. And the last part of the definition talks about carried out through flexible strategies. So the individual's not applying for open positions that are already existing in the market, um, and we're not using traditional job search strategies. We're really looking at networks, building relationships with businesses, and utilizing strategies such as informational interviewing, work experiences, working interviews, and employment proposals, and job negotiation. Next, let's take a few moments to walk through the steps of the customized employment process, and we're going to look at each of these more in depth. So the individual starts out in discovery, then mo moves into a vocational profile or a discovery profile. Um, then we look at customized employment planning and meetings around that, followed up by the development of a portfolio or a visual resume. Then the customized job development and negotiation, and then of a course, accommodation and post-employment support. <clears throat> As you can see, these are not traditional terms that we use in the employment process. So let's look at each uh, step. So traditionally, we would learn about an individual with a disability through a series of vocational assessments, where a state vocational rehabilitation counselor might uh, go through some assessments or send them to someone within the agency to have assessments done. This process is totally different. This is all done in the community, in locations where the customer feels most comfortable. Um, we use what's called discovery, 
and that is looking at the job seeker through personalized approaches in environments that are comfortable to that job seeker so that we can identify their skills, interests, and abilities, um, as well as their employment conditions that they need for a job. One of the ways we do this is through home visits. In these home visits, we actually go out to their home, have conversations with the job seeker, with their family, um, anybody that is in the home regularly with that job seeker. We take a look at the environment. We observe what's going on in that environment. Is it a young adult who has certain chores that they do on a regular basis? Oftentimes we might see sports memorabilia scattered around the home. Is that something that the individual that we're working with has or is that part of the family's collection? We ask that similar question to a young adult that we were working with recently. They had Virginia Tech pictures, photos, uh, footballs scattered around and it was his sister's uh, memorabilia, but he had taken on the love of Virginia Tech as well. She was a student there, and every Saturday during the fall, they would go to Virginia Tech for those football games. So, as part of the negotiation with his employer, it was important that we make sure that he had access to Saturdays off so that he could attend those football games with his sister. It's also a great way to observe how an individual access things and what types of supports they need in the home. I recently worked with a young man who had a high spinal cord injury, and so he had limited use of his arms and hands, but watching him in his home, I was able to see how he accessed his remote control and his cell phone uh, using, using an eraser on a pencil. The next thing that we do is interview family, friends, and other support folks who are involved in the individual's life. This gives us a different perspective on the young person or the adult that we're working with. Oftentimes, I might see myself one way, but my family, my friends may see me in a different light and may see strengths that I have that I didn't realize that I have. So it's important to gather that information from friends and family. It's also important to observe the individual in different uh, environments. I know that the way my children act at home is totally different from the way that they act in the community. When they're at work, they're very professional. When they are at school, they rarely talk. If you were to ask me how my kids were, I would say that they talk nonstop but that's the difference between how I see my children and how others see my children. It's also important that we understand the individual's cultural and social background. This can affect how the individual or the family sees work in their culture, in their home. It's also important that we understand their role in the family um, and in the community and how they view certain things that are important in that community. For example, church is really important here in the South to many of the individuals that we work with. We have some individuals who absolutely will not work on Sundays, and so that's really important that we know that ahead of time so that we can negotiate that with the employer as we look at employment. It's also important to observe the job seeker in multiple environments to collect information. We can observe them in their home, their school, and social settings, as well as places that are novel to the individual. And what can we learn from that? Well, we can learn a lot. Just by taking someone to the mall, we can learn what they like, um, how they handle money, are they able to make a transaction on their own, do they use a debit card, do they get, use cash, do they use cash and wait for the correct change, are they able to slide their debit card through the machine and enter their PIN? What stores do they go to? This gives us insight into their interests. Do they make rash decisions with uh, what they're going to buy or do they really look at prices? <clears throat> what else do they um, do while they're at the mall? Do they go to a restaurant? How do they order? Are they using the pictures? Are they able to read? All of these are important things that we can observe just by an hour trip to the mall 
with an individual. We also want to understand non-work needs of the job seeker. And this includes everything else that's important to the job seeker that affects work. Transportation is a huge issue. How is the individual going to get to and from work? Because how they get there will affect when they're available to work. If they're using specialized transportation, we have to consider when is that available to them? Are there certain hours that it's not available? So overnights are not an option or evenings or weekends are not an option. How about budgeting? Do they need help with money management? Do they need help from a benefits counselor if they're receiving disability benefits or other federal or state benefits? What about recreation and social uh, activities? This is a huge um, area of life that we don't want to forget about and we don't want to leave out in the planning process. Are there individuals who attend church every Sunday or every Wednesday and that's important to them and we want to make sure that they can still do that? Are there medical appointments or regular counselor visits that we need to um, attend to so that the employer knows that ahead of time and we've negotiated that in the employment process. We also utilize in informational interviews and this is a great way for both the job seeker and the employment specialist to learn about businesses and the tasks being performed in those businesses. So many individuals with disabilities that we work with have no idea about the vast number of businesses in their community and what is done in those walls. And so informational interviews are a great, great way to see what's going on in a business and also to, to learn more about those businesses and what the work culture is like within the business. Job shadows and business tours also helps job seekers and employment specialists get a visualization of tasks that are being performed in that environment. And again, what the culture is like within a business. My best friend came down this weekend and she got a new job. She was excited to tell me that when she had gone on her interview and to learn more about the company, that they had a whole wall of coffee machines and bowls full of M&Ms. This was a huge perk to her. It was one of the reasons she chose that job because she loves coffee and who doesn't love chocolate? Once you've completed the discovery activities, you should be able to get a good idea of who your job seeker is and that will allow you to build a vocational profile of the individual. It brings together everything that you've learned about the individual during the discovery process and really guides the job, or excuse me, guides the businesses that you'll look at for job development. You can think of it as a story, if you will, a story of who the job seeker is, focusing mainly on the positives really only on the positives. It's not a judgmental, it's not a um, biased document, it's a straight facts. This is who the person is and this is what we observed. And it shows what the individual skills, abilities, and interests are and what their features of employment need to be. This also includes an employment planning meeting where the individual can invite all of their friends and family that are important to them to talk about what the plan is moving forward and allows us to take some time to brainstorm ideas of businesses and job tasks that would be a good match for the individual. What I've seen in my career is that traditional resumes don't always portray the skills and abilities of the individuals that we serve and the job seekers that we represent. So customized employment utilizes a portfolio or visual resume for individuals that really do highlight their skills, abilities, and interests. And we can use them to share with business managers and business owners when we meet with those individuals to give a better and a more accurate uh, picture of the individual that we're working with. We like to use PowerPoints um, and in those PowerPoints use videos or a combination of videos and pictures. We've used iMovie and other apps before 
to kind of highlight and show a short movie about the individual um, and using as many photos about not only the individual and what they have experienced doing, what, what they did during that discovery process, but also what their interest and um, some of their maybe high school activities that they've done to build a nice, well-rounded picture of the individual. So when we're looking at job development and customized employment, we're not looking at open positions, but rather strategically targeting businesses in our community that match what we determined through the discovery process for the individual that we're working with. We're utilizing both the Job Seekers Network as well as our own network as an employment specialist, but we're also utilizing the family or any friends or support folks that are important to the individual. We're using their network. The bigger the network, the, the better. And we're approaching businesses with the intent to learn more about them. Often as rehab professionals, we go into businesses and we just talk and talk and talk and talk and never ask any questions of the business. So it's really important that we learn how to shut our mouths a little bit more and listen a little bit more. So ask open-ended questions of the business and let them talk. I promise they will love to talk about their business and what they do and not have us worry so much about um, sharing so much, especially in those first meetings. We want to give them time to learn, to, for us to learn about them, and then we can share about what we do. <clears throat> Another approach that we use is uh, working interviews. We use these a lot at VCU, and they've been very successful. And this is a opportunity for the individual to go into the business at a preset time for a preset amount of time, so really no more than an hour or two, to show the business owner or manager how that individual is able to do the job or the, excuse me, the task that you have negotiated for that individual to try. Oftentimes, individuals uh, don't really interview as well as maybe their colleagues, so this would give the individual a time to show what they can do versus using verbal skills to do that. <clears throat> and then after that, we would be negotiating positions using an employment proposal that would lay out exactly what the task would be, what types of support the individual would need, um, how, what the role of the employment specialist would be, how, what hours the individual would work, pr a proposed pay rate for the individual. The last step of customized employment would be where the employment specialist would actually work with the new employee and the employer at the job site providing on-site training, identifying any accommodations or supports that the individual needs, whether those are um, physical supports, whether they're compensatory strategies, but also looking at natural supports there in the business as well as community supports. So now that we've given you a little overview of customized employment, we want to share about some of the research that we're doing at VCU. Very little research has been done regarding customized employment in this model. And so we were fortunate enough to um, be awarded a disability rehabilitation and research project on customized employment of individuals with disabilities. We're testing the effectiveness of customized employment as an intervention uh, to facilitate employment for youth with disabilities. And this project is funded through the National Institute on Disability, Independent Living, and Rehabilitation Research. And we're working with young adults with developmental disabilities who are ages 18 to 24. It is a partnership with Transcend, and we are evaluating and comparing employment outcomes of individuals with intellectual disabilities and autism who receive customized employment versus those who receive services as usual. At this point, we're gonna hear from some of those employments, 
uh, specialists and research staff, both from VCU and Transcend, regarding the work that's been done thus far in the project. Hi, I'm Marianne Beckman from Transcend. I'm the site coordinator for a customized employment grant with VCU. I am Jenny Light, and I also work for Transcend, and I am an employment consultant. I am Caitlin Jones. I work for VCU ROTC, and I'm an employment specialist. Okay. All right. We're here today to have a panel discussion on customized employment in this project. Um, why don't we start out with the discovery process. Caitlin and Jenny, visiting the home of a person is recommended first step in the discovery process. What have you learned by going into a person's home that you might not have noticed if you skipped that step? Caitlin, would you like to go first? Yes. By going to my job seeker's home, Jane, I was able to see her interact with her family members observe her in a comfortable setting and this allowed me to um, see how she appropriately communicates with her family members and that helps me um, communicate with her more effectively. Okay. And I would agree that being in a job seeker's comfortable environment is very important. Um, I think they come in a much more informal way. They aren't dressed to impress, they're comfortable. One of my job seekers came out with his John Deere cap, his camouflage sweatshirt, and his Carhartt pants, so <laughs> it was easy to see what his interests may be. Okay, thank you. Caitlin, can you tell us about a discovery activity that really helped you to get to know one of your job seekers? Yes, so a discovery activity that I got to know my job seeker, Robert, was really important because I had, to tr I had to build up a lot of trust and rapport with him. Um, so we started with a discovery activity at the Science Museum. Um, he's a physics major at VCU, and I really wanted to learn more about what type of science he was interested in. And this discovery activity allowed me to find out more about that. Um, and then just as we got more comfortable and he trusted me more, I was able to go to his um, one of his science classes and I learned that he was very outspoken and answered a lot of questions. So I was able to learn these things through discovery. Okay. Jenny, can you think of an example? Sure, I or have. Two. I have a participant who um, loves to ride her bike. So one of the discovery activities was going for a bike ride around her neighborhood and to just see the way that she was able to navigate herself with safety rules, mm -hmm. other cars on the road. She had a very um, huge level of independence when she was on her bike. She didn't need a lot of other supports. It was her own little world. So that was good for me to see these are the things she's able to do and has a level of independence when she's involved in something she enjoys. Okay, thank you. So as you're going through your discovery, why do you think it's important then to identify employment themes for a job seeker? I think it's very important because it's more individual specific for the job seeker. Um, it allows the employment specialist to have more of a direct path when looking at different businesses. Um, and it's going off the interests and strengths and abilities of the job seeker and not just a broad bucket of information. Right, you're kind of looking at what the job seeker wants instead of what an employer may want. So we are able to pick a general category that has the strengths and the interests of the job seeker and we can move on from there in terms of where we will conduct our informational interviews. Um, Jenny, would you like to go first and give us an example of how you've identified an employer's needs? for a specific job seeker? Sure, I think that goes back to when we go into an employer doing a lot more listening than talking, asking those mm -hmm. questions that are open-ended and, and looking around the environment to see what are those jobs that seem to be unattended to because there are bigger tasks to be completed in their place of work. Mm -hmm. um, a specific example that I have um, was observing in a grocery store. I was kind of observing and I noticed that they kind of 
they had messy and unorganized aisles and one of my job seekers had experience with this um, which was called facing which is organizing the different boxes and making sure they were um, put in place and there weren't boxes on the floor so I scheduled an informational interview which is important in this process and had a conversation with the manager of the grocery store that I observed and customized this employment for the job seeker. And me too, in a place of employment, it was a small engine shop and many tractors were on display to be bought and sold and all of them were covered with dust and dirt and seeing that they wanted to present their, their machines in a good way, I was able to ask, who does the cleaning of these machines? How do you keep up with that? And he could then comment on, well, we used to keep that very clean and we don't have someone to do that anymore. So it's just asking those questions and listening. Mm -hmm. How do you describe the benefits of customized employment to an employer? I think it's important to let that employer know that by customizing a position, they can build a job task to the strengths of the job seeker. So you can take those interests and those strengths of our job seekers, they can look at what they need to do to operate in an efficient way, and they can customize that position for that job seeker. I agree with Jenny. Okay. So why? Why would an employer want to customize a job for a person with a disability? I think a person would want to customize a job with someone with a disability because it, free, it frees up maybe an employee that they are taking over um, some tasks that aren't a part of their job duties. Um, maybe not paying that coworker overtime. Um, or usually with a person with a disability in the community, um, it bumps up or improves the employee's morale. I think it improves the culture of the whole company. When you have someone that is working there with a disability, they are seen as productive members of that business and that they can do just as much good as all of the other employees in that business. Okay. So what are, can you share with us, what do you think the benefits of customized employment are for the job seeker, for that individual with disabilities? I think there's a lot of benefits. Um, it gives them a sense of community, a sense of purpose. Um, it can boost their confidence by going into work. Um, they gain friendships, relationships. I agree. I think it's the, the, the fact that it's customized, it again is to the strengths and interests of that job seeker. So they go mm -hmm. into a job feeling comfortable and confident in what they're doing. They know they can perform this task, which then translates into them being wanted at that place of employment. People are glad that they're there, and it creates that community and the friendships that Caitlin's talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next we'll move into each of you have that chance to go through a case study with really specific examples on what we just talked about. So thank you. Thank you. So I'm introducing Sarah. Um, I'm her employment specialist. I've been working with Sarah since January 2018 um, and she's 21 years old. So let's start with discovery. Uh, discovery was really important with Sarah. Uh, my first visit with her was at her home. I remember her opening the door with a bright smile. Um, she immediately grabbed my jacket, hung it up. Great personality. Um, I remember thinking, wow, she, she has a great personality. Um, I sat on the couch with her mom and we just had a conversation. We all had a conversation. Um, Sarah involved as well and I got to know that she really likes spending time with her dog. Um, she loves to dance and sing. Um, she went to school at Norfolk Academy and had a lot of work experiences which included um, being involved in a vet tech. She worked at a gym. She uh, was currently involved in an internship at Hospitality Food Services. Uh, and the next thing we did was we wanted to get to know each other a little bit more, so we went into our discovery activity. So with our discovery activity, the very first thing we did was we went to a smoothie shop. 
I remember at my home visit with Sarah, um, her mom told me that was her absolutely favorite thing. Uh, and if we wanted to get to know each other a little bit more and have her tell me a little bit more about herself was to go to a smoothie shop and um, just kind of sit with her, play games. We observed them uh, getting some of the smoothies put together and I really got to know Sarah a lot more. And when we were at the smoothie shop, she invited me to uh, her internship. So her internship was at Performance Food Group where she was working with a coworker that um, helped Sarah kind of stay on her tasks. And uh, she started this internship with her classmates, but the manager said that she really stood out to, um, she stood out out of all of her classmates because of her personality and her worth ethic. So exploring this theme, I went and observed her there, and I observed that Sarah was very comfortable going through the first floor performance food group, had very, um, was very comfortable with some of the coworkers she worked with and knew what she was doing um, throughout her whole shift, and I saw her already getting independent. So some of Sarah's job duties were she was stocking the cafe in the break room with tableware, um, plates and cups and drinks and helping the head chef. Um, she was delivering mail to each of the break rooms and she was stamping the outgoing mail. Um, she delivered a FedEx that was coming into Performance Food Group to all the different employees. And she also, at the end of her shift, she would go and help the receptionist at the front desk answering phone calls and um, just kind of saying hi to all the employees that were coming in. So the next step for me was after observing her for about two weeks, um, I approached management. And um, we started with a job negotiation. So the management was very um, interested in Sarah having an employment specialist with her instead of one of the employees interrupting his day uh, and job duties to be with Sarah and kind of make sure she's staying on task, doing the tasks appropriately and effectively. Um, so this went into Sarah getting a job, a permanent job at Performance Food Group. She works every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, she makes $12 an hour. And with me um, doing job site training with her right now, she's be already becomes very independent. She learned a lot of new tasks since the beginning of me watching her in her observation, and she uh, as an employment specialist for her, I laid out a job duty schedule, which has all of her tasks laid out that she can refer back to and check off that she's completed it. And as she's getting more independent, I've slowly faded out from her. Um, so first we started with fading out just while I was on the job site and she was doing it by herself and she would check in with me after each task. And then we've gone in, I come in later um, into performance food group and she would start off her shift by herself. And now we've gotten to the point where I only come in a few hours a week with Sarah and she's been very successful, very independent. The manager is really happy with her performance and soon it will only be me coming in um, sporadically checking up on Sarah and um, at Performance Food Group and she's doing a great job. Okay, so I have had the pleasure of working with Dan in my case study. Dan loves small engines. The dirtier he can be, the better. That was my first indication that this was a great place to look for Dan. Um, when I first met him, he came to the kitchen table in his family home, dressed in his Carhartt pants with his camouflage sweatshirt and John Deere hat. Um, 
we sat around the kitchen table spending some time talking about things he enjoyed and one of the things he was most proud to talk about was his side job of tree cutting where he showed a pile of wood from ground to roof of a garage that he had stacked himself and he also took us to show his his truck and tractor and was very proud that he knew how to change the oil on those machines and was tinkering with their engine. Um, the first thing we decided to do was do a, a job shadow. So we knew that he was interested in small engines and we went to a couple uh, local car dealerships. But because they are such large corporations, they ran into a lot of red tape issues. So even though the store level people were very excited to have Dan come and do a work trial, the corporate offices, things got hung up. So we weren't able to follow through with that. And having gotten to know the family through discovery and, and doing things with Dan, mom made us a suggestion. She said, there's this great little equipment shop down the road and Dan takes the tractor there when it's broken. He takes the snowblower there when it's broken. I, I think they even know him by name. So we set up a work an interview, I'm sorry, an informational interview and job shadow with the equipment store. So when we went to the equipment store, um, we could see that there were only a handful of employees. It was a family owned business. So the owner, um, he and his wife owned the store and they had a showroom full of red and green tractors, John Deere, of course. Um, they were covered with inches of dust. And after asking questions about how do you keep your showroom clean for when people are coming in to purchase your, your tractors, the owner said, well, my elderly father-in-law used to come in and clean them, but he's just, he can't get in here anymore. And um, we were able to say, well, Dan is your guy. If he can come to work and leave with dirt on his knees and grease under his fingernails, he's gonna do a great job. So they were excited about the option of a work trial. And Dan and I went in and within an hour's time he had cleaned 10 tractors, spotless, shining and red, and they wanted to hire him on the spot. So from there we did a job proposal and began our negotiations. And Dan now works there three days a week for a total of 11 hours. He's getting paid $8 an hour and he truly is independent when he works there. On his latest evaluation, which was a three month evaluation, he had glowing reviews from his coworkers and the owner saying, quote, we absolutely love having Dan work here. So it is a truly customized position where he's supported by his colleagues and coworkers and we provide spot checks to be sure that things are going accordingly. Thanks everyone for joining us today. And I wanna especially thank Mary Ann and Jenny and Caitlin for sharing their experiences and sharing their stories about Dan and Sarah. It was great to hear that. Uh, on our website, uh, you can find more information about our project, as well as other trainings, fact sheets, and things like that. So I encourage you to visit our website. Um, and finally, our web board is available. So if you have any questions for any of us that you'd like more information about a specific topic or have individuals that you're working with that maybe you've reached a barrier that you don't know how to tackle, please feel free to reach out to us and ask us any of those questions. We'd be happy to help. So have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.